So for the final section of chapter 7, the energy equation, we are going to be um, looking at the, found, the conceptual foundations of the energy grade line and the hydraulic grade line. We're going to define what these are and we're going to look at uh, various um, um, situations where these occur and how we can use them. So let's just flip down through the slides here to slide 60. We're getting towards the end of the chapter here. And um, there we go, slide 60. Um, why is this important? This is, uh, the grade lines are graphical representations uh, that show head in the system. These help engineers locate and correct trouble spots in the system, and in particular looking for uh, places in the, in the system that might be of low pressure. So the first question is, why would an engineer care about low pressure in a system? What, uh, what uh, catastrophic situation have we, do we know about that, that happens when we have low pressure? And that is cavitation. So we want to avoid cavitation or um, things like that. So we define the energy grade line as being the, um, the addition of the velocity head, pressure head, and elevation head. So in terms of the energy equation, that is going to be alpha v squared over 2g plus pressure over gamma uh, plus z. This is the total head, the, the total energy head. Um, within um, the system at any point. And of course, uh, this is uh, a term that appears on both sides of the energy equation. And the hydraulic grade line, on the other hand, is just the pressure head times the elevation head. And we have seen this term many times. P uh, pressure over gamma plus Z is just the piezometric head. So these are what the, uh, the, the energy and the hydraulic grade lines are. Well, let's see what they look like. So for this system, we initially have, um, uh, since, uh, since this is not moving, um, this surface is not moving, or at least not very much, we can neglect the velocity of this surface. There is no velocity head, and since it's open to the atmosphere, um, the pressure is zero. So the only amount of head that we have here is elevation head, Z1. As soon as we move uh, along the system out here, as soon as the, we start to have a velocity, um, we have, a, we have a, 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 a situation where the velocity, the, 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 uh, in the tank, the velocity is zero, but as soon as we get into the, into the tube, the velocity goes to a constant speed. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have the velocity head term of alpha times v, uh, v2 at some point 2 squared over 2g. And so we, um, there's a difference now between the energy grade line and the hydraulic grade line because the difference between them is the velocity head. If you remember from the previous definition, the, the only difference here is, um, is this term right here. So if you, if you compare the energy grade line and the hydraulic grade line, they're going to differ by that velocity head. And there it is. There's the term right there. So um, the other thing that you notice is that, the, that the, in general, both the energy grade line and the hydraulic grade line are decreasing, 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 decreasing along the pipe. And why is that? It's because the pressure at point at the end of the pipe here has to be atmospheric again or zero gauge just like it was back up here but in the process you've lost all this um, all this uh, uh, elevation head so no matter how long the pipe is it's going to have to go to this level the, the hydraulic grade line is going to have to go to um, just being equal to the piezometric head which at the end of the pipe is just z2 so um, the total grade, the total um, uh, energy grade line is actually a little bit more because there's still some velocity coming out the end of the pipe. So at this point, we just have um, the piezometric head, which is equal to the uh, elevation head at, this, at the end of the pipe, plus a little bit of velocity head. So uh, how, what, how, what 
um, what is different when we add a pump. I was trying to allude to this uh, earlier in class um, when we were working out some examples that a pump just simply adds head to that left-hand side of the equation of the energy equation. So uh, there's an abrupt rise. Wherever there's a pump, there's an abrupt rise in the head due to HP. And so we just have the addition here of HP, which gives us basically uh, some more um, energy grade line to work with and also hydraulic grade line. Um, and the other thing is, is turbines. What happens when we have a turbine? This makes a lot of sense, that whenever we have a turbine, there's a corresponding abrupt drop because we've removed energy out of here. And it turns out the book mentions also that um, a lot of times there will be a gradual expansion of the conduit um, near the turbine that allows the kinetic energy to be converted to pressure head um, with much smaller head loss at the outlet, which obviously we would like to, um, to avoid. So you can see that there's this nice uh, kind of tapered horn shape uh, uh, conduit that, that uh, reduces our head loss to, to be as small as we can make it. So um, pumps and turbines, pumps uh, add head, turbines subtract it, just like we have imagined. Um, the other thing is, is at the end of nozzles, um, if the velocity is increasing, if we have a situation like this where we've necked down the flow and we've increased the velocity, that's going to make a corresponding increase in v squared over 2g. The, the velocity head is going to go uh, from a smaller value to a larger value, and uh, we're going to have a large situation here. If we don't, if this is our datum, then um, then um, actually this uh, this grade line would come down here. But but in this case, um, there's a little. We, we can see that uh, that the velocity head has uh, decreased quite a bit, I'm sorry, increased quite a bit because of the increase in velocity in the nozzle. So this putting these uh, concepts together, this is what uh, the situation looks like. Remember the velocity starts from zero here and so we, we that there's some period where we have a transition from zero velocity head to sum and so we've got a little velocity head. They're both decreasing because of the they're decreasing the pressure. And then we have a, a, a nozzle or a necking down of the, uh, uh, to a smaller diameter pipe, so our velocity head increases. And um, then we have a corresponding decrease down to here, where we, um, where we uh, uh, end up with just the um, elevation head from our datum, and plus the velocity head, because the pressure head has to be a zero gauge again, as it was back up here. Um, one final problem here is um, to look at a pipe that goes um, above the energy grade line. If this is going to occur, this value here is going to go to a negative value. That is of concern because we have chosen uh, the pressure here to be zero gauge and uh, at both the, the the beginning and the ending of the system. And so when P goes negative, that is going to be actually equal to a positive vacuum pressure. And um, that is going to be a dangerous situation where we may develop cavitation. So we could imagine a situation where we have a reservoir here or a, some large tank and, and some pipe spilling out. But say um, something below the subsurface has pushed this up. Maybe it's a frost heave or something like that that's damaged a pipe and pushed it up in elevation. That pipe could experience cavitation and, uh, and be damaged over the long term. So this is a, a convenient way to note since the elevation has gotten so high um, and the piece of, remember the hydraulic, hydraulic grade line has to be the piezometric pressure. So this has got to be P over gamma plus Z. So if Z gets too large, this uh, P over gamma has to actually go negative to keep at the at the hydraulic grade line. Okay, so that's a that's a situation that we would identify in the engineering system where we have a problem. Um, think of ways to fix this situation. Well, one would be to straighten out the pipe um, or to uh, maybe raise this tank up further. So those are two ways to uh, fix the situation. Um, have a look at this problem, uh, example 7.6 at the end of the book, which will show you how to um, draw energy and hydraulic grade lines and, and use them in systems. 
So that's it for 7.8, and that completes Chapter 7. Thank you.